guys, welcome back to Cypress from Zero to Hero. And in this lesson we will talk about new method that was released in Cypress 6, Cypress Intercept. Cypress Intercept is a replacement for the method SciRoute that we learned in our previous lessons and we use SciRoute to intercept the API call and process the stub response for our application. So Sci intercept is more advanced method that will combine regular HTTP request, fetch request, page load, different resource loads. It will not need Sci server anymore. And it also supports many sophisticated approaches how to stub your request and process your response. Initially, when this method was released, it has some issues. But now with Cypress starting from 6.2, it's working just fine. So you can go to your project and update Cypress dependency to 6.2.0 in order to use this method. Once you update your Cypress to 6.2, you immediately notice that methods SciServer and SciRoute are highlighted and they are mentioned that this method is deprecated. So let's refactor our existing code from the class to use our new method SciIntercept. So pretty much what you have to change is just simply replace route with intercept. We replace it here, here, uh, here, here, and here. That's it. And we don't need size server method anymore, so we can delete this method. And one more thing, the fixtures tags does not work like that. In new method side intercept, we have a definition of router matcher and router handler. That was not a thing for the side route. What is router matcher? Router matcher is an object where we define our parameters, how we want to match our request. And router handler is another object where we define how do we want to process our response. So this is something new. So in router handler, we cannot use the fixture as a string like that. So we have to provide the object like this. It should be object with fixture key and name of our fixture. So let's refactor this as well. So we wrap it into the curly braces. Now it's fixture with tags.json. Okay, that's it. And I think this is the only one place. Okay, this is the second place where we use this. Okay, fixture articles and fixture tags. Okay, and one more place is here. Instead of providing the string, we have to provide object right here. All right, that's it. So let's run our test and see if it is working. Okay, two tests passed. One is failed and let's see why it's failed. It did two attempts and uh, we see the response right here that XHR status to equal 200 and expected undefined to equal 200. So why is that happened? And this is the object that is coming back. This is a new type of the object. And as you can see, we don't have in the response such a thing as a status. Before we was looking into the response object and we were looking for status to equal 200. Currently in the method intercept, that guy was moved into the response because actually a status code is related to the response right here. So status code 200. So what we need to do is to modify our expectation to list for the response and status code. So let's change this. So instead of uh, status, we need to search for response. status code. All right, should be 200 and let's run this test one more time. Everything is working fine. We have three tests with new method side intercept. We successfully completed the refactoring of our existing code. 
Now let me show you a few more features related to new method Psi intercept. So let's open documentation. And first of all, let's talk about this router matcher. What is it about? So I'm scrolling down and this is the example of the object for the router matcher. So if you want to use not just method in URL and you want to use the router matcher instead of these two parameters, you have to provide the object with the match parameters that we actually want to match over here. And this is the example what our parameters exist in this method. So you can match by auth, by headers, host name, if we want to intercept HTTP or HTTPS calls only, uh, method type, path, path name or whatever. So let's refactor our existing code to expect for matcher object by uh, method name, which is method parameter and by the path. If we go back to our code, so here we have get tags and let's replace this with object. And our object will have method get and path will be tags. So, and let's run just a single test to see if it's working. Only this get tag list. Yeah, you see it's working. We have three tags. Route is working successfully. So we modified our intercept object. Instead of listening for the URL, we are listening for the path, the, which is a part of URL. And, and this path is tags. So once the path tags matching and method is get, then we want to provide the response of our fixture with the name of the text. And this is one of the examples. So as I mentioned before, you can create your matcher by different parameters. For example, you want to intercept only API calls for certain port, let's say, uh, and you can do this, or some query string parameters, only those calls you want to intercept, and you can configure your router matcher to use these kind of keys. And let's talk a little bit about the router handler which features this guy has so let's scroll a little bit down this is router matcher router handler so router handler accepts string object function and static response as the parameter so string is basically a string static response is the object with a certain list of the parameters same thing like we did with the router matcher so and this is the parameters Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Here we go. So this is the parameters for the static response of the router handler. So this is the fixture property that we used before for uh, our fixture file. And if you want to use a different body of your response, you just provide the body property and provide the string or the object for your body response that you want to use as your intercepted response call. Also, you can use callback function and you can intercept not only the request, but you can also intercept the response and you can modify your request and the response before processing it further. So let me show you a couple more examples how to use this. So for example, in this test, we creating a new article, we typing the title, description, body of the article when then we click in on the button and our application sending the request with this three data with title description and body of the article but let's say we want to intercept this request modify it and send a different request to our actual server not what we typed into the browser and we can intercept the request modified and send modified request to the server and get the expected result that it should be modified. So how to do this? So we can, um, let's do this. Uh, let me copy and paste this test and I'll rename it as a new test. And we name it intercepting and modifying the request and response because you can modify request and response both so 
uh, now I will show you how to modify the request. So we want to intercept article calls and then we gonna use this object of our request and we want to modify it. Our request object, not response, let's call it request. Our request object will have body, obviously, and this body is, uh, where's the request? Article, and then it has description, right, like this. And before sending this to the server, the actual value that we want to set will be not this is a description. We want to send this is a description too, like that. And when we click on this button, even if we type this is a description here, the actual request will be sent this is a description too. And then we can put assertion here that expected result will be this is a description too. So let's check this out. I put it it only and run this test. Okay, you see test is successful and here's our assertion. This is a description to look at the browser that we actually typed this is a description. But if we go to our home page on the global feed, this is the article that was actually posted. And as you see, it is this is a description too. So we intercepted the request that our browser wanted to send to the server. We modified this request and this is what the result we have. I don't know why might be in real testing you might ever need this, but if you will need, you know how to do this to intercept these kind of calls. And the second example, I'll show you how to intercept the response from your server and modify this response before moving forward. It's very simple example. So let me copy this and paste it here. I comment out this code. So here the code will be a little bit different. So we take in our request and we have a method reply. And we getting our reply from our server. This will be a response. And then we, let's say, make assertion of our response that our response is as expected. Expect response body. Uh, then what is article description to equal this is a description, right? Because we're typing here, this is a description, we're publishing this article and our real request that we are expecting should be, this is a description. But then after we verify it, we want to modify this response and send this modified response back into the browser. So how we do this is just simply replacing this parameter, response body, description let me just take this response body description should be equal to this is a description too and i run this test okay and this test is passed so look at this. So we have assertion that our actual response was this is a description to equal is description. But then when we got the actual uh, modified response from our route, uh, the actual value that was passed into the browser is this is a description to equal to this is a description to. This was two other examples how you can manipulate with the data in your request, in your response, how you can modify this data depends on your need. So Psi intercept is very, very powerful method when we talk about the interception of the API calls made by our browser. So you can read this documentation with more examples on how to use Psi intercept. Cypress documentation is always really, really awesome. And I'm sure you will find the uh, needed example for your use case for your particular project. All right. Thank you guys and see you in the next lesson.